Keyword research is the foundation to ranking your website pages on top of search engines like Google Search so that you can drive more visitors to your website with either paid or organic web traffic. There are dozens of keyword research tools that you can use and I've talked about many of these on this channel. However, if you're truly serious about SEO, search engine optimization, and ranking your website pages on Google, then one of the best investments you can make is in a premium keyword research tool like SEMrush. I personally use SEMrush for our brand and it has helped take our business to the next level. And today I want to share how you can also leverage SEMrush so that you can ultimately drive more traffic and grow your business online. Okay, so before we go ahead and dive into this SEMrush tutorial, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already or if you're new to this channel and that way you'll stay updated with actionable videos and tutorials designed to equip you with the skills, knowledge and tools to help your small business thrive online. And with that happy note out of the way, let's go ahead and get you up and running with SEMrush. <music> Okay, so getting started with SEMrush, the first thing that you want to do is navigate over to your browser and type in SEMrush.com or feel free to click the link in our description below this video and that's going to take you here. Now remember the whole idea of SEMrush is to improve your ranking on Google and today I'm going to show you exactly how. SEMrush is an all-in-one SEO tool that allows you to research keywords, optimize your content and engage in competitive research, site reporting and more. In terms of pricing, SEMrush is a premium keyword research platform and therefore prices do start at $119 per month for their pro plan. Now the pro plan is more than sufficient enough for most bloggers, for most small businesses. And you can get started for free on a free trial to see if this product works for you. So if you don't like this keyword research tool, you can always cancel before the end of your free trial and you will not be charged. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Simply navigate down to Start Now, Sign Up, and we'll meet you inside your SEMrush account. Okay, so once you've navigated through the process of setting up your SEMrush account, you'll be taken inside your dashboard. And the first thing that we want to do is navigate over to the left-hand sidebar and locate Keyword Magic Tool under Keyword Research. And this is where you're going to spend quite a lot of time. This is where we can engage in keyword research. We want to identify relevant keywords that we want to rank our website for. For example, if we navigate up to enter keyword, I'm going to enter in best CRM software for small business. And this is the keyword phrase that I want to create a blog post for, best CRM software for small businesses. So I want to engage in keyword research around keywords that are related to this keyword. So think about the website page, the website blog that you want to create. What is the primary keyword that you want to enter in here so you can engage in keyword research? Then navigate over to the right hand side and click on the country that you want to target. For us, we're going to target the United States and then click on search. And down here, you'll notice broad match keywords that are related to the keyword that I entered. So if we navigate down here, you can first see our keywords. These are keywords related to the keyword that we entered. Next to that, we have the user's intent. This is the keyword intent, and there are four different intents. There's transactional. This is when someone is typing in this keyword and they want to complete a purchase. There is also navigational intent, which is when the person typing in this keyword is just looking to browse through a blog, browse through a website. And then we have the commercial intent, and this is when the intent behind the keyword is to learn more about a product or service or a particular brand. And the final keyword by intent is informational. This is when the user's intent is to find a specific answer to a question. And the keyword intent helps you identify what type of post that you want to create based on the search's intent for that keyword. Next to this, we have the monthly search volume, and this is in the US at the moment. We also have keyword difficulty. This is how hard it is to rank for this keyword. So the closer to 100, the harder it is to rank for that keyword. Then we have CPC. This is how much advertisers are spending. 
to target that specific keyword. And then over here, we have the competitive density in terms of PPC pay per click campaigns. So the main areas that you wanna look at is the KD, the keyword difficulty, the search volume per month, the intent, and the keyword. Now you can see these keywords are quite difficult to rank for. So what we're gonna do is navigate up to keyword difficulty, and I can choose the keyword difficulty down here. Do I wanna find easy keywords, possible keywords, difficult keywords, or any of these others? I can also add a custom range. Now for this keyword, this is a very competitive keyword. So if I select possible, easy, or very easy, most likely there are gonna be no keywords that are easy to rank for. Now what I can also do is navigate over to related and find related keywords based on my keyword and these are some keywords I can look at. Again, the competition is very high with all of these keywords. So maybe that would tell me that this post that I wanna create is very competitive and it's gonna be hard for me to rank high on Google search. And we also have these other options up here. Now, if I'm interested in one of these keywords, let's say for example, I like the look of this keyword, I can click on the keyword and that's gonna show me information about that specific keyword the volume, keyword difficulty, global search volume between all these different countries, the intent up here, the cost per click for advertisers, and then keyword variations and ideas down here. We also have keyword questions, what is the best CRM software for small businesses, and then we have related keywords. So these could give me ideas with the type of content that I wanna create and the keywords that I want to add into my content. Now, if we navigate back up to the top and we head over to Keyword Magic Tool again, this time I'm gonna navigate up here and type in AI Tools. This might be a keyword that I want to rank for because I know AI tools are becoming popular and I wanna start talking about AI tools on my blog. So I'm gonna navigate over to Search and this time I'm gonna navigate over to Keyword Difficulty and I'm gonna click on Easy. And then as you can see, under keyword difficulty, you can see that a lot of these keywords are easy to rank for compared to CRM software for small businesses. So this could be a better post that I want to create. So if I navigate up here, you can see that AI tools for business is just 23 for the keyword difficulty and 210 search volume in the US each month. So I wanna target this keyword. So what I can do is navigate over here and click on these three dots or three lines, and then navigate down and click on create a new empty list. And I'm gonna call this AI Tools for Business. And I'm gonna hit this tick, and that's gonna create a keyword list. So what I can do now is add these keywords to this list. So again, I like the look of this one, so I'm gonna add, add this keyword, AI Design Tools, that's low KD, and relatively good search volume. Again, we can navigate down, best AI copyright tools. I'm gonna to add that, add this, and add this keyword down here. And then what we can do is navigate over to Keyword Manager and click here, and navigate down and click on the keyword list that I just created. And as you can see, these are the keywords that I wanna use in this post. So I'm gonna create a post called AI Tools for Business. And these are some of the keywords that I want to use. And I can continue adding keywords to this list if I like through engaging in keyword research using the Keyword Magic tool. Again, you can click on each of these keywords and that's gonna take you to the keyword overview where you can further analyze each of those keywords that you want to target, as well as find other keyword ideas. Now, what we can also do is navigate over to position tracking. This is where we can track how our website is performing for specific keywords. So what we're gonna do is navigate up to enter domain, enter in your domain name, then navigate over to set up tracking. We're gonna use our entire domain to track. If we click on as root domain, we can also select a specific URL, but we're gonna leave our primary domain in here and just track our website's performance. Then come down to location. We're gonna enter United States. And if you're a local business, you can go ahead and add your local business in here. Then come down and click on continue to keywords. Here we want to add the keywords that we want to track, or we can navigate over to import from and you can import a CSV, a text file if you like, from another campaign, SEMrush suggestions, or you can connect Google Analytics. I'm gonna go ahead and select SEMrush suggestions, and then I can add keywords that must be contained. This is optional, 
and then I can select keywords to add. I can add the number here. I'm going to go ahead and click import. And up here you'll see the keywords that SEMrush has automatically added. These are keywords that you're currently ranking for. And what we want to do is track the ranking of these keywords. So what we're going to do is come down and click add keywords to campaign. Now you can also add additional keywords if you like based on your own keyword research. So if we come down we have these keywords. I'm going to navigate down and make sure this is selected. Send me weekly ranking updates via email. This means every week we'll see if our ranking position has changed for each of these keywords. So let's go ahead and start tracking. Give SEMrush a moment to set up your keyword tracking. Okay, so now position tracking has been set up for your website. What we're going to do is navigate down to the top keywords. These are the keywords that we added. Then come down and click on view all 10 keywords. And then navigate down the page to rankings overview for your 10 keywords. You can also add additional keywords if you like. And here you can see the position. You can see the position change, the difference over time. And then other information like visibility and estimated traffic and the difference change. So again, every week you're going to receive an email regarding these keywords and the position change. So this is something you want to keep an eye on every week. And to make sure that your website pages, your blog posts are increasing every week. Okay, so what we're going to do now is navigate back over to the left hand side. And now what we want to do is engage in competitive research. To do that, simply navigate up to Domain Overview and click here. And then navigate over to the search bar and type in a competitor's website. So a competitor's website for my website, Stuart Gould, is Adam Enfoy. So I'm going to add that in here, adaminfoy.com, and I'm going to select Worldwide Traffic and then Search. So think about your competitors in your niche. These could be local competitors or international global competitors. If we navigate over to Authority Score, this is the authority that this website has online, the organic search traffic per month, as well as their backlinks down here. Then if we navigate down, you can see where the majority of their organic traffic is coming from. You can see their organic keywords that this website is ranking for. And then if we navigate down the page, we can also see the top organic keywords. Now this is something that we want to spend some time on. These are the keywords that maybe you're not ranking for, but your competitors are, and therefore you can steal those keywords. So for example, if we navigate down and click on view details, and under positions, what we want to do is navigate down the page, and that's going to take us to the keywords that this competitor is ranking for. You can see the keywords down here. You can see the position, the intent, the traffic that this keyword is generating to the blog, as well as the search volume for that keyword per month, and the keyword difficulty. So I would look at the keyword difficulty, and then see how easy it is to rank for these keywords, and how much search volume there is. So for example, this one is YouTube MP3 Converter, uh, the search volume per month is 110k and it's quite easy to rank for. So this could be a keyword that I want to rank for. Now I can also navigate over to the URL and this is the page that's ranking for this keyword. But if I navigate up to the top, you can see that this keyword has a ton of search traffic per month and a low keyword difficulty. So what I could do is click on this post. So I can simply click here and that's going to take me to this website page and I can see how he's structured this blog post, this website page, and then I can create content that's better than this page. And that way I can steal his traffic if I create a better post for this keyword over here. However, for me, I don't actually want to rank for YouTube to MP3 Converter because that's not going to generate any revenue. If I navigate down further, I can look at other keywords that I want to target that my competitor is ranking for. Now, if we navigate back up to the top, we can also click on Pages, and that's going to take me to the top pages that are performing organic pages for this competitor. You can see the URL over here. We can preview that page if we like. We can see the number of traffic per month that that page is generating, and we can see the backlinks over here. So again, what you can do is research your competitors, identify those pages that are performing well, the keywords that you want to rank for, and then take your competitors' keywords, analyze their content, and make your content better. 
Now, it's also important to understand backlinks. Now, backlinks are basically links that point from other websites back to your website. And this is going to help you build authority and credibility online. So yes, it's important to engage in keyword research and to create high quality content, but you also want to build backlinks across the internet with high quality websites. So we want to identify backlink opportunities. To do that, simply navigate over to the left hand side and click on backlink analytics. And as you can see, we still have our competitors URL, our competitors domain up here. If you don't, simply navigate up to the top and type in your competitors domain name. Then navigate down and click on backlinks. And here we can see the number of backlinks and referring domains. What we're gonna do is navigate down the page and click on active. We wanna see the active backlinks and we also wanna click on follow. So we want follow links. That means if a website has a link that directs back to our website and it's a follow link, that means they're passing their credibility, their authority back over to our website. And that's ultimately going to help us build authority and credibility online if we have hundreds and thousands of high quality sites, websites, redirecting, pointing back to our website. So as you can see, if we navigate down here, you can see that this website page here, this company, links back over to our competitor's website. Again, here's another website, another website page that links to our competitor's website page over here. And you can see the page that this links to. And so we can navigate through and look at all of these different backlinks. So we wanna do the same. We wanna navigate through each of these backlinks and we wanna create our own backlinks. Now, what you wanna do is, for example, navigate up here and let's say I have a blog similar to this, how to start a blog. Then what I can do is click on this website page. So this is a website page that has a backlink that directs to Adam Enfoy, this blog post over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and research this page, this website by clicking here. And you can see that the root domain is blog.hubspot.com. This is a high authority domain name, which means this is a great backlink. And we wanna create a backlink similar to this. So you wanna look at the monthly visits as well as the authority score. This is the main thing that you wanna look at, the root domain authority 89. There are many ways that you can actually build backlinks. The main way is to guest post on other people's websites and that's gonna send a backlink to your website. Now we're not gonna to talk too much about backlink strategy, but if you do wanna learn more about backlinks and how you can create your own backlinks and how you can build a backlink strategy, then let me know in the comments down below and I will create a video that's dedicated to building backlinks. Okay, so next what we wanna do is analyze our site. To do that, simply navigate over to Site Audit. This is the last thing that we want to cover. And all you need to do is enter your domain name. So as you can see, I've already done this. You can also navigate over to create project and add the domain in here and then click on create project and that's going to generate a site audit. So here is one I created earlier. If I click on my domain, once you've generated your site audit, your audit will look like this. And what you want to do is make sure that your site health is optimal. Here you can see the errors, warnings and notices. If we navigate down the page, we can click on view details to see our top issues and how to correct them. So for example, these are my top errors. You can see I have two issues with duplicate title tags. If I click here, that's gonna show me these two pages. And these are the issues that I need to resolve the duplicate title tags. And what you can do is navigate up to PDF or export as a different file, and you can send those reports directly to your web master or your web developer so that they can resolve those issues, those errors and warnings on your website. However, that is everything that I wanted to cover in this SEMrush tutorial for beginners, helping you get started with SEMrush for keyword research, for optimizing your content, and for competitive research and reporting. And there we have it guys, that is it for this essential guide to using SEMrush for small businesses. Now if you have any questions about SEMrush, make sure to pop them down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this tutorial all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to this channel. And that way I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone.